Every decision on trade, on taxes, on immigration, on foreign affairs will be made to benefit American workers and American families. President Trump laying out his vision for America first in his inaugural address. And it's time now for our Sunday group, the anchor of special report, Brett Baer, author of the new book, Three Days in January, already on bestseller lists. Fox News political analyst and columnist for The Hill, Juan Williams, Mo Alethi, executive director of Georgetown University's Institute of Politics and Public Service, and from The Wall Street Journal, Kimberly Strassel. Kim, there's been a great deal of analysis of President Trump's inaugural address and what it says about how he'll govern. Did you see a blueprint for his administration and what he laid out on Friday on the west front of the Capitol? Yeah, I think he was very clear. This was a very Trumpian speech. People have called it dark, but I think it was actually a speech for our times. The American public right now does not want to have a president who went out with fancy language and sort of soaring rhetoric. A lot of them are indeed feeling forgotten. And Basically, those few words he said, every decision will be about you, suggests that he's going to be very uh, attuned to public sentiment, and that's what's going to be driving him. Look, he's not a very ideological president. This is somebody who is going to be very attuned to, to public sentiment. And to problem solving. And problem solving. And, and don't underestimate the amount of low-hanging fruit that there is there. I mean, just with his cabinet picks alone, the amount of things that can be done on day one uh, when they get installed in office in terms of regulations. Uh, and that's before you even get to big congressional action. Juan, you were critical, I think it's fair to say, of the president's speech. But in the speech, and I've read it several times since Friday when we all listened to it together, he talked about schools, he talked about restoring the inner city, he talked about a new jobs push, safety in our streets. What's wrong with that? Nothing. In fact, I would, I would applaud it uh, because I think I'm so glad that he raised these important issues and pointed out that a child in Nebraska you know, in the plains or a child in the inner city looks up at the same night sky. That may have been the most poetic part of his speech. The problem, Chris, is that he exaggerated. He's talking about American carnage in what he called inner cities. I suppose he's talking about black areas of our uh, metropolitan areas. And to me, that's alarmist. It's an exaggeration. It's not reality. I mean, it sounds to me almost like Mad Max in the Thunderdome is what he's describing is on America's Speaking streets. of exaggerating. Yeah, but I mean, the reality <laughs> is crime is down. Unemployment is at 4.7. I think that's the lowest since 08. I mean, you look at the growth in the black middle class in this country. So, yes, we can have a discussion, and it's necessary about improving schools in particular, about lack of economic opportunity. About I, safety in the streets in cities like Chicago. Sure, but that's a specific problem. But again, it, it sounds as if you are demeaning a whole group of people in order to present yourself as a savior, and also in terms of what he said during the campaign when he asked the question, what the hell do black people have to lose? Why don't you vote for me? We ask you for questions for the panel. And on this issue of how Mr. Trump is going to deal with Congress, we got this on Twitter. What clashes do you see from his prior ability to make his own decisions versus now dealing with a co-equal branch of government? Uh, Brett, how do you answer that, especially given, and I've talked about this with both Reince Priebus and Mitch McConnell, given how he went after the Washington establishment in that speech? Yeah, he is a deal maker, but I think Kim is right. This was a populist speech. It wasn't Reagan. It wasn't looking back at different speeches before. It wasn't even Roosevelt. It was Donald Trump. And it was about uh, laying it out. It was a campaign type speech, but it was what they wanted. That is what Donald Trump and Steve Bannon wanted, and that's actually what his supporters want. They want a total change of Washington. They say both parties aren't working, and the message was to the establishment, this is a new deal. This is how we are going to run this place, and in order to get from point A to point B, we're going to have to break some China. But he, now, but he painted a pretty dark picture of the Washington establishment, basically said they're worried about themselves and ignoring America's problems. But I mean, you could make that case that that's been the case for many, many years. Right. But how does he deal with that? Well, he has to deal with them saying, I have the popular sentiment behind me. That's where the populist part comes in. This is, uh, this is why he was elected, and he was elected uh, to change Washington. I want to play another clip from Mr. Trump's inaugural address. Here it is. Today, we are not merely transferring power from one administration to another or from one party to another. 
but we are transferring power from Washington, D.C., and giving it back to you, the people. Mo, a liberal Democrat could have said that, and my guess is you would have applauded it. Even Bernie Sanders could have said that. So what's the catch? I mean, Barack Obama in 2008, we are the change we've been waiting for, right? I mean, it's not a very unique or original thought. That's that, not my that point. My point is, there. so what's wrong with it? What I think was wrong with his speech, look, I give him a lot of credit on that speech for a couple of reasons. One, it was very consistent. It was very Trumpian. This was the message that got him here, and uh, it was targeted to the same people who voted for him. But that wasn't a majority of the country. I'm not saying he wasn't elected president, right? I mean, <laughs> he was elected president of the United States. But a majority of the American people did not vote for him. And I heard very little in that speech that would actually appeal to those people. This was a very good, very Trump speech for a narrow, or narrow is not the right word, but for a specific audience, his supporters. Will he begin to appeal and bring more people in? He's entering office with the lowest approval ratings of any president ever in the history of polling. That should be a bit of a concern for him, rather than just play to his supporters, which I think he did very, very well. Kim, I want to, do you agree with that? or? So here's the thing. You go out and look in the country. While the majority of people may not have voted for him, popular vote, um, what is widespread across the country is an incredible disgust with Washington and the inability to get things done. And I think... And also a sense, if I may, of, of tremendous economic dislocation that people are being left behind. Exactly. Okay. So in that regard, I do think his speech was speaking to more than just those who voted for him because that is a unifying theme out there. You talk to the Trump people, you talk to congressional Republicans, and what they are banking on is that you come in and you get some things done immediately, some big things that people can see, and that that is what is going to end up moving some people in his favor, more than words of unity in a speech. All right. We have to take a break here, panel.